Okay, so let's get into the expanded conversion journey. What does this mean? So you guys are probably very familiar with a map that looks something like this, uh, where you're leading a customer through you know, what is kind of like a hero's journey from the second that they hear about your product all the way to the point that they purchase your product, your service, your good, whatever that may be, and then you know, helping them to achieve their goals, unlock the value that your product has. So there's all of these steps throughout this conversion process. You're helping the customer learn lessons, you're unlocking you know, what their intrinsic motivation is, you're helping them to reach those goals, and throughout that, you're feeding them different pieces of content. And that ends up kind of looking like this, uh, the standard conversion funnel. Uh, so a couple of steps, this is a quick, just short conversion funnel, you guys have seen this before. So awareness at the top of the funnel. And a lot of times, especially I know when I was first starting out in marketing, we were told to focus on top of the funnel uh, you know, tactics. So let's do a brand awareness campaign. Let's run some top of the funnel uh, Facebook ads. Let's, let's do a bunch of top of the funnel work so we can bring in more leads. And if we have more leads, then we'll be able to convert those folks into customers. And we're gonna talk about how, of course, that, not, that is not the case. There's some other things that we need to do and think about and plan for and work in conjunction with product teams, development teams, in order to make sure that we are effectively driving the right conversion. We're helping our customer to use our product to effectively unlock value. Um, so I remember getting to the point where the customer purchased the product or service, and I've started multiple businesses before. Um, and so one of my first businesses, an e-commerce site, once the consumer checked out, it's like, yes, our marketing worked. We're done. We can disengage at this point. We've got the money. Let's keep it moving and try to find the next customer. That is not the case. Marketers can no longer disengage after the conversion. So it's super exciting that you've got the customer to purchase your product, your service, engage with your platform. However, in today's world, there's so many marketing messages, there's so many great products out there um, you know, that marketers need to be intimately involved post-conversion to make sure that the customer is not only utilizing the product, but they become an adopter, they become an evangelist, and they're referring their, their counterparts, their friends, their family, whoever is in their sphere of influence, they're referring them to use your product or service. Uh, and, and a lot of that has stems from what you do after the customer converts. We're gonna talk about that through the next couple of slides. Okay, so this sideways uh, funnel, so it's flipped sideways, so it all fits on one screen. So this is what we're calling our expanded conversion funnel. You can see the first part is just the regular conversion funnel that you guys uh, are used to seeing. And the second part is now our new job as marketers. All the things that we're responsible for, uh, making sure that the consumer has a delightful experience. We're going to talk a bit about the archit architecting delight within your product. Um, so activation, adoption, value loop. Is the customer unlocking value at critical points throughout using your product? Are they continuing to unlock value one year, two years, three years, four years, five years into being a use, uh, user of your product or your service? Viral loop. So this is something that, and it's funny, our firm will get a lot of co companies come to us and be like, oh, we keep hearing about viral loops. What about the double viral loop from LinkedIn or the viral loop from Dropbox that helped them grow really quick? We want that viral loop. When in fact, there's a multitude of uh, things that you need to consider. We're going to talk about NPS uh, feeding into viral loop, uh, and we're going to talk about the viral coefficient K factor in a second. Uh, so that's why it's pushed all the way down at the funnel. A lot of times people expect to say, okay, you convert, then let's ask the customer for a referral right? No, you've got to make sure that the customer really understands and it, your, the pro, your, your product and they are integrating it into their life. Your product or service is becoming a part of their daily habits. It's becoming a part of how they interact with the world. And then the last thing uh, is retention, which we're not going to spend too much time, as I mentioned today, um, but critical. If you're not retaining customers, so if you're solely focused at the top of the funnel, driving a bunch of leads, and you're not retaining those leads, unfortunately, you're not growing. So you can't have growth without retention. Um, and I'll sprinkle in some of those anecdotes in a second here. And I think that this quote sums up the sentiment of you know, the rest of my talk. Really, when it comes to lead and referral generation, a happy customer is your best tool. So more than ever, um, you know, even with all the digital marketing platforms, tools, software, analytics that we have, 93% of customers trust recommendations from their sphere of influence. They trust their first degree uh, you know, recommendations. So if someone says to me, hey, Teju, there's this awesome restaurant in Cleveland. 
I think you should check it out. I'm more apt to check out that restaurant versus I see a Facebook or a banner ad uh, retargeting me to try to go to this restaurant because they know that I'm in, you know, in the area for a conference. So it's really critical that as marketers, despite the tools that we have, despite all the technology that we have, that we're focusing on making sure that we're driving customers who are becoming referral mechanisms for our, our product, our platform, and our service. And the question I get a lot is, is this only for SaaS companies? Is this only for app companies? Um, you know, do, is it only that you know, app companies can do viral mechanics or you know, need to focus on referrals? And, and that's not the case at all. B2B, B2C businesses, especially in B2B. So while we use the fancy term viral loop in a lot of SaaS companies, software as a service, um, you know, the same thing applies for a law office or for a marketing agency. You want to make sure that you have delighted customers who are referring you to you know, the people that they, they know and they trust. Okay, so let's get into some of the mechanics. So part two is the, the guided conversion model. So what I'm gonna do here in the next couple of slides, I'm gonna have you guys take a step back. So we talked about conversion before we used to celebrate, yes, we're done, our marketing worked, we got the customer. We're actually gonna take a step back and think about how we got that customer. How did we trigger and cue them to get them excited about the product? What information in Intel did we collect on that customer pre them purchasing our product or service or software, whatever it may be? And I like to use the word delight. You hear me say delight a ton because you know, products, think about the products that you love. De it's a delightful experience. The user experience is awesome. The customer service and support is awesome. The people really care that you're unlocking value. And that helps to create these rock star, high growth pro uh, products or services. So delight, when we think about delight, there's a couple of things that we're reflecting on. So this acronym delight, I, I call it a marketer's time for reflection. So you're asking yourself some critical questions. Number one, why uh, is my customer here? What are they desiring? What is their desire? What is their end goal? Um, what is the experience that they're anticipating to have with my product or service? What are the other experiences that they're having out in the marketplace? What are experiences that are they having with my competitors? All of that is going to inform and skew the perception that your, your customer has the second they go to your landing page, the second they go to your website, the second they go to the app store and download your app. Lifestyle, you know, what is their lifestyle? How are they going to be able to use the product? Do I need to trigger them with messaging to say, hey, it's lunchtime, download my app now and get cash back. We're gonna talk about a cash back app that we worked with and how we use lifestyle messaging in order to really accelerate their growth. Uh, what's their intrinsic motivation? So. Um, prior to working in marketing, I did a lot of work in consumer behavior um, and behavioral economics. And one of the things that was really critical and interesting is to understand that if you want someone to form a habit, you've got to tap into their intrinsic motivation. What is driving them? Why are they doing what they're doing? What are their end goals? What are their life goals as well? Um, and it's really critical to understand that so that you're setting up messaging, your content is speaking to that intrinsic motivation. We're gonna also hit on goals. So what are their goals? What are the hindrances? So this is really the, the time to run some analytics on your website, do usertesting.com, which I do in anything that we roll out or any client that we work with. We do usertesting.com to figure out what are the hindrances on uh, the website or the landing page? Are people confused about the messaging? Is there something wrong uh, or broken with one of the buttons that's causing them difficulty with engaging? Uh, all things that you need to know. And also, what are the trade-offs? There's a real opportunity cost for any time someone buys your product, your service. There's an opportunity cost in their time and their money. There's other things that they could be purchasing. There's other things that they could be doing. So understanding that, asking, your question, asking those questions pre-even getting the customer so that you're setting up a process, like I'm going to walk you guys through, where you're collecting that data. So this guided con conversion, um, the goal here is pr prior to the customer actually purchasing your product or engaging with you, collecting as much information as possible. Setting up event tracking on the back end of your website. So I know there are some sessions where people have talked about analytics. I love using tools like Kissmetrics. Um, some email marketing software already has this integrated. So you're tracking different points on the website and collecting that and, and feeding those tags into your email marketing system, to your data warehouse, whatever you're using. Using. Um, and here's an example of a custom onboarding survey that we did for a client in order to collect this information. And you can do the same thing. You can build a custom uh, survey. You can use tools like outgrow.co, which I love to do quick surveys. 
And the goal here is that you're collecting all of that delight information and you're feeding that, creating these tags. So when you look at the customer profile, you say, hey, I know a lot about this person. I know, you know their lifestyle, I know their goals. They told me specifically what other products or competitors are using. So now when I go in the back end and set up my content marketing and my messaging, I am really clear and concise to them. It feels like I'm speaking to the customer. The customer is saying, wow, it's amazing that this company knows me, who I am, and what I want, and can serve me a lot better. Uh, in effect. So we'll see. Here's an example of the survey. So we did a survey. This is a fitness products company. It's an e-commerce website. And when we first got engaged with them, it was interesting to take a look at the analytics. One of the things we always do is uh, we run some tracking on any website. And we use a tool called Hotjar to do this. And there's a ton of tools like Hotjar. So what we're doing is, we're, number one, we're heat mapping. We're looking at where are the stickiest parts of the website, where are people clicking. And they're also recording video, uh, uh, videos of the, the viewers and the visitors of the website. So what is their experience? Where are they going? Where are people abandoning on the website? Where does it look like they're confused? Uh, so you think about a lot of e-commerce websites, sometimes there's just a bunch of products. So you go to the website, there's products on the page, and you're not really too sure which product is for you. Which product should I be purchasing? Which product is going to solve my goals and my problems? And that was the issue with this website. There was no navigation, there was no helping the customer to figure out what product they needed. So we set up this survey and you can see the first question was, hey, you know, what best describes you? So there's different options. Are you a fitness at work person? Are you a sports fanatic? Um, you, you know, are you into family fitness? So our goal here was to better understand the customer. We collected whatever they, they responded, we collected as a tag, fed it into our email marketing software, and that became a part of the profile that we were creating for this customer. This is before they even purchased a product from us. So it would drop down from the website, say, hey, are you confused after about 10 seconds? Let us help you out. Take this quick survey and we'll recommend some products for you. The next question was understanding their goals. So you can see here, we asked a couple goals-based questions. So you know, what are you here for? Do you want to lose weight? Are you training for an event? Um, you know, are you trying to build muscle? Because there were different products in this company's offering that we could feed up to that customer in order to get them to convert, in order to make sure that we're meeting their goals. And you can see here, the last question was that intrinsic motivation. And if I were to do one survey question for any product, service, or platform, it would be something related to intrinsic motivation. What is driving, why are you here? Why are you spending your time on any given day in the week to be on my website? What are you looking for and how can I help you? So you could see for this fitness product, we asked, you know, what is driving you to achieve this? And there was a couple of different responses. I'm trying to be healthy for my family. I am, you know, trying to feel great and fit in my clothes. And depending on what this person answered, again, data tag gets fed into their data warehouse, into their email marketing software, and then a whole new consumer journey gets unlocked. Different email messaging, uh, they see different landing pages, they get re different retargeted ads. A ton of different things happen. And again, we're creating about six different kind of choose your own adventures in the conversion journey that were really customized to each of our consumer profiles. Okay, so now we're gonna go into activation. And one thing I meant to add, so after that, after that person filled out the survey, uh, they would receive product recommendations. So we would give them three products. Hey, based on your results, here's what we think would be great for you. Um, and that helped to boost conversions exponentially. No longer were consumers the, you know, kind of lost on the website figuring out what should I purchase, what's going to meet my goals, I'm trying to lose weight. I don't know if I should buy this journal, I don't know if I should buy this food planner. We fed it right to them so that they could quickly convert and check out. All right, so the paradox of the active user. Um, I know whenever I buy stuff from like Ikea or any new thing, I'm always so eager to di dive in and accomplish my tax that I see the manual, and I'm the type of person that glances over the manual, but I throw it to the wayside. I don't know if anyone else here is like that. I'm like, oh, I'll figure it out. There's some pieces, there's some screws here, or I download an app, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's probably works something like Facebook, I'll figure it out. And most consumers are like that. You're so excited about getting into their new product, your service, whatever it may be, that you can't wait to dive into the new shiny thing. And you don't spend a lot of time or pause into figuring out how to actually use this. What are the key value points that I need to make sure that I unlock? Uh, there was a study done in the 80s by some researchers in I I IBM who said, 
literally said, you know, users just never read manuals. And it's funny because we think about markers, we get so excited about our explainer videos that explain the product. I don't know how many products or SaaS platforms, I was signing up for this viral loop software the other day, and they had this fantastically produced video on how to use a software. I instantly clicked out of it and went to go fumble around the software because I was so excited to get into it. So it's an interesting thing when you think about that as a marketer and you think about how now you have to be so intimately involved post-conversion. You think about how can you feed messaging in order to make sure that your customers activate properly? How can you make sure that your customers hit the high notes of your product so they're actually unlocking the value in the right way? Thank <laughs> you.